I don't call it Fox News. I just call it Fox. And Fox themselves don't consider themselves journalists. Uh, what's that guy's name? Sean Hannity doesn't consider himself a journalist. Tucker Carlson considers himself, his employers consider himself, what, entertainment. Oh, we don't really take him seriously, and his audience doesn't take him seriously. And this is how they Trojan horse it. What, what Tucker does, and, and it works, is I'm just asking questions. I'm just asking questions. Don't I have the First Amendment right to just ask questions? So just by, quote, unquote, asking questions, you're able to launder white supremacy and then introduce it as a mainstream talking point. The second thing they do is we're just kidding. We're just joking. This is just entertainment. Don't take us literally or seriously. Another way you Trojan horse white supremacist content and mainstream it. And now, Danielle, because like you said, that we don't take it seriously, we don't attack it, we don't shut it down, we we normalize it, mm-hmm. we both sides it, mm-hmm. we mainstream it, we tolerate it. 50% of Republicans believe a white supremacist conspiracy theory, the replacement theory that has radicalized individuals to commit violence. A third of Americans, ladies and gentlemen, believe this white supremacist conspiracy theory. And then, as you and I have been saying, QAnon, which was once on the fringe, ladies and gentlemen, is now a mainstream talking point. They introduced it again through the confirmation hearing of Judge Ketanji Brown-Jackson, and now it becomes a mainstream talking point where apparently just just last week, Elise Stefanik, I mean, gosh, there's so many examples that I forget. She called Democrats, quote, unquote, pedo-grifters. That is a QAnon talking point. QAnon has radicalized individuals like Ashley Babbitt and others to commit violence. So what's the end game here, right? When I when we're complaining about this, it's not the usual both sides. Oh, look how extreme they are. Oh, they're racist. Oh, it's white supremacist. Oh, this is toxic. It's that this ideology and these talking points will lead to violence against our communities. It will lead to violence. The FBI. There's a reason why the FBI said the QAnon is a national domestic terror threat that will radicalize individuals in groups before the 2020 election. And voila, I give you the January 6th violent insurrection. And now that's a talking point by Republican leaders. And so really, at the end of the day, to really get to the heart of it, why don't, why don't they give a shit? Is because it's white folks. It deals with white folks and Republicans. You talked about the Obama administration. We've mentioned this on the show before. 2009, there was a DHS Department of Homeland Security agent Daryl Johnson, white guy, who did this massive report talking about the radicalization uh-huh. of the right wing. He talked about all this. Yeah. And and, and the report got snuffed. That report that came out in 2009 mm-hmm. got they shelved iced. It. They shelved it because the Republicans at that time said, this makes us look bad. This is attacking our base. And so the Democrats realized they needed bipartisanship to pass Obamacare. They helped shelve it as well. Daryl Johnson got so pissed off. He, he left the DHS, quit. Went to Wired, talked about it, was kind of a whistleblower, said, dude, I came up with all this data. I, 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 like Paul Revere, I, you know, I rang the alarm. It got killed. He wrote a book about it called Hate Land. And fast forward now, the number one domestic terror threat is white supremacist terrorism. Which he and this told is where us it's 12 good to have years a Muslim. ago. <laughs> 12 years ago. And this is where it's good to have a Muslim on the podcast. I'm Muslim and I remember the last 20 years in the war on terror. If these dudes were Muslim and we knew the ideology, you know what they do to Muslim terrorists? They go back to the mosque. They surveil the mosque. They freaking question the imam. They question the books that he reads. They go to the charities. They ice the charities. There's a chilling effect. There's freaking congressional hearings. But because it's a white dude, it becomes a lone wolf. And there's no lone wolf. This is an international terror threat. This is an international global terror network. This guy was inspired by the same conspiracy that inspired a Christchurch killer in New Zealand. And guess, but r- well, remember what they did after? It ain't even domestic. Remember what they did after the Christ uh, Christchurch killing in New Zealand? They banned assault weapons. <laughs> it took one one act of terror. And a mass killing. And the prime minister said, so we're done. And banned nope. assault weapons. We Jacinda's like, nope. Instead, in America, our logic would be, oh, stop going to the grocery store. Just order Amazon Prime. Like our, do you know what I'm saying? Like we, we expect yeah. you, we expect people to just adapt to violence. This is, we expect you to die. We expect you to die and, and or adapt to violence. I watched as a CNN reporter broke down. Black reporter broke down in tears a couple of days ago because he said. Victor. Victor. He said, Victor Black, right? He said. Victor Blackwell. Victor Blackwell. Victor Blackwell. Is Blackwell. this how we are supposed to live? 
Is this how we are expected to live? Like all of us in America, just under threat and fear because our country is being held hostage. Like, is this how we're expected to exist? And I said, not enough Americans across communities ask that same goddamn question. And I, we the didn't do, yes. and I'm like, this is exactly how we're expected to live. And when Republicans are able to up the ante when they take back Congress in midterms, you think that this level of threat is uncomfortable for you? Just wait. Just wait and Just wait. see what they Just are wait. going to do. You know, you know, I've said this before, and I said I tweeted this this week because so many of our colleagues in media and, and so many individuals in institutions who know better have given this a pass because they're deluded into thinking that their whiteness, their privilege, their power will protect them from the violent consequences of fascism. And they're paving the road to fascism through their quote unquote civility politics, right? And so many and people always ask me, like, watch, how come so many of your colleagues both sides it? And I say, because this violence doesn't affect them yet. It didn't affect their families. It didn't affect their communities. Trumpism didn't affect them. It didn't make them uncomfortable. It didn't make them unsafe. They didn't have to have the conversations with their kids or their family members about how to feel safe in this country. And honestly, they just don't give a shit. They just don't give a shit. But it will come after them because if you're a student of history, fascism comes after everyone. And if you don't believe me, look at Disney. Disney thought they could pay off both sides. Ah, ha, ha. We're a corporation. We're in Florida. We employ so many people. We're in bed with Republicans. They'll never come after us. And DeSantis is like, all right, Disney, I'm going to make an example out of you. I don't give a shit that you were the biggest employer in Florida. I don't give a shit that you've given us so much money. I'm going to make an example out of you to make sure that all the other corporations get in line. You better get in line because once we get in power and you front, we're going to slap you down. This is a warning. This is a warning. And I, I think, I feel like, you know, our show with our audience, I know a lot of people get it, but if there's some people who are listening who again, think that this replacement theory isn't coming after them, you are not a student of U.S. history. They went and killed black folks who were allies with, uh, excuse me, they went and killed white folks who were allies with black folks because they said, you are a race traitor. There's a viral video that's going on right now. Speaking about allies, there's a white Uber driver. He had the camera on. You guys should go check this out. He picked up a couple from Pennsylvania. There's these two owners of a bar. The lady comes in and she goes, oh, thank God. You're white. You're, you're, you, I, you don't have an accent. You're an average American. And the, the white dude says, get out of my car. And her husband's, he goes, what? Why are you kicking us out? He goes, no, that's uncalled for. That's ridiculous. Who cares if, if I'm white? This, no, get out of my car. He goes, how dare you? And just like that, he says, you end lover. And then he goes, this is, this is recorded on camera piece. And now that, that bar <laughs> has to like shut down because he released the video and, and the, and the, and the guy who's the driver who's a white guy is like now seen as a hero. You guys go check out this video. I'm not making this up. That's the type of allies that we need. We need people to confront this racism, shut it down. There's only so much that me and Danielle can do. There's only so much that black and brown and Asian folks can do. Honestly, if they look at the data, white people, when they speak to other white folks about racism, that's the most effective message in Messenger. Yeah, because why? Like, wh like what else can we do, Daniel? Because it's, it's quite literally like it's you know when it's, uh, I, I think there was some type of um, scientific study that was done about the fact that like men can't hear certain pitches that women have like in their voices. I feel that way about black and brown people towards white people. It's like, I feel like we're talking and all they hear is like, mwah, 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 mwah. like nothing. Yeah, Charlie Brown. Yeah, mwah, it's mwah, a, mwah. It's Charlie a Brown, Charlie Brown it's Like <laughs> we don't translate. So, I mean, to that point though, this is what scares me, Waj. What scares me is this, that one, we are coming to a place where we recognize if you are white, that your skin color isn't going to save you. Your wealth may not even save you because we're mm -hmm. moving to a place where we may not have freedom of movement, right? If you are a person with a uterus, um, you're not mm. going to have freedom of movement. If you think that you're, we're not going to get to a place where it's going to be like, why are you leaving state? Why are you traveling from Texas to New York? Is it for vacation and what kind of vacation? And do, are you pregnant and all of, like, these are things that people are not thinking about. But what scares me is what happens to the white folks who may are not rabid racists, who I want to say are the fence sitters, 
but then see, say to themselves, well, it's too dangerous for me to stick up for those people, to stick up for people that I don't really know and don't really care about, like that Uber driver. It'll be a lot easier for me to just, you know, go with the flow. This is how Nazism spread in Germany, right? It was just going to be safer, right? As a way to divert uh, violence and threats and economic insecurity from you, you'll just throw up that Hitler sign and keep it moving so that you people know where your allegiance are.